Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another basic lecture. This lecture is a continuation of the previous lecture on retinoscopy in which we studied about the basic principles and methods of retinoscopy. Here in the second lecture we shall be discussing retinoscopy in particularly in patients who have astigmatism. So what sh we shall study in this video? Number one how to know if astigmatism is actually present in a patient's eye just by doing the retinoscopy and how to detect the principal axis or the principal meridians in the eye. Number one is first thing that we should know is what is astigmatism. As you all know that in a spherical error what happens is that all the meridians will have equal power. That means even if you carry out the refraction at 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 45 degrees, 135 degrees, any axis if you carry out the refraction, the refraction or the power will be same in all the meridians and the resulting image will be formed as a point focus on the retina. However, in an astigmatic eye, that is not the, that is not the case. In astigmatic eye, the meridians have different powers and usually the, there will be two meridians which are 90 degrees apart which are called the principal meridians. So in an astigmatic eye we do not get a proper focal point on the retina. As you can see in this image there, is, there are two meridians one is vertical one is horizontal and they are having different powers along them and therefore you can see that these are focusing one is focusing behind and one is focusing in front of retina or both are focusing at different positions in front of the retina. That all depends on the type of astigmatism that the patient has. Now I would like to tell you that I already have a video on astigmatism on the channel. So if you do not know what is astigmatism it is advisable that you visit that video first and then come back to this video to understand in detail about the retinoscopy in astigmatic eye. So what is meant by the principal meridians? Now as we know that in an eye we can have so many meridians right? In a spherical er an eye which has spherical error like the myopes or hypermetropes, the, all the meridians will have equal power. However, when you talk about the astigmatic eye, we should know what is, what is meant by the principal meridians. Now in a uh, out of all those meridians, if we actually choose two meridians, one which has the maximum curvature, which is called the steepest meridian, and the one which has the least curvature, which is called the flattest meridian. So these two meridians, one the steepest and the other one which is the flattest, these two meridians of the eye are known as the principal meridians, right? So in a regular astigmatic eye, the principal meridian will usually be at uh, a difference of 90 degrees. So they are usually present 90 degrees apart. So if one meridian is present at 90 degrees, the other meridian will be present at 180 degree. If one is present at 45, the other meridian will be at 135. If one is present at 60, the other will be at 150. So if you see the difference between these two meridians are usually in a regular astigmatism, they will usually be about 90 degrees apart. Now uh, to understand retinoscopy in astigmatic eye, it is very important for you to understand the measurements which are depicted on a trial frame. Now if you observe the trial frame, this will go in front of the right eye of the patient and this will go in front of the left eye of the patient, right? So if you observe carefully the trial frame, the 0 degrees is always present on to the left side of the patient or to the right side of the examining. Always 0 degrees here and then as you go in this direction which is the anticlockwise direction. So it is like 0 degrees, 10, 20, 30, this is 45, 60, 75, 90 so on and so forth. Similarly in left eye also always 0 degrees present on the left side of the patient or right side of the examiner and then it moves, it increases in the anticlockwise direction. So always 180 is present on the uh, right side of the patient whether it is right eye or the left eye does not matter. So this is very important for you to remember. Next, uh, from the basic video on retinoscopy, I told you that when we were trying to check the horizontal meridian, we were putting a, we were using a vertical streak and then the retinoscope was moved in this direction. Okay, so whenever we have a vertical streak, we are basically testing the power along the horizontal meridian of the eye and in the power cross, we will depict whatever value we get on neutralization along this horizontal line. 
Whereas if you consider a vertical meridian, if you want to measure the power along the vertical meridian, the type of streak that we are using is a horizontal streak. And now this horizontal streak will be moved up and down on the patient's eye. And then when you neutralize this uh, horizontal streak, the power that you get, uh, get will be written along the vertical hand of this power cross over here. So this is very important for you to remember. While measuring the horizontal meridian, use a vertical streak. And while measuring the vertical meridian, use a horizontal streak. Now, normally, this is how we get uh, in a normal spherical eye. Whereas, sometimes you would have noticed that when you put a vertical streak like this, the, uh, the reflex that you get will not be parallel to that streak. Instead, we are going to get an oblique streak. Sometimes, uh, when you put a horizontal streak like this, the reflex that you see is not parallel. However, the reflex will be oblique. So, what do you do in such cases? Such cases basically indicate that your power cross or your principal meridians are not 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Usually, we do it at 90 and 180. Therefore, we take that in a normal eye, the principal meridians will be at 90 and 180 degrees. However, there can be conditions where the principal meridians, that is the flattest and the steepest meridians, might not be at 90 and 180 degrees. They might be present at different angulations. So, in such cases, when you carry out your retinoscopy at 90 degrees and 180 degree streak, you will get certain non-parallel reflexes and therefore your power cross also will be different in such cases and such eyes such a kind of reflexes will tell you that the eye probably has astigmatism next is how do you locate the principal meridians of the eye now you know that uh, the meridians are not 90 and 180 but now you want to uh, find out what other than 90 and 180 are the meridians present in this eye so this can be done using retinoscopy using the four different characteristics of the reflex these are the break in the reflex the thickness of the reflex the intensity of the reflex and the skew of the reflex so you can remember it using the mnemonic bits Okay, so here in this bits, B stands for break, I stands for intensity, T stands for thickness and S stands for skew. Now, let us try to understand what are all these characteristics of the reflex. The first characteristic is the break. So, what is meant by a break? So, a break is observed when the streak is not parallel to one of the meridian. As I already told you, here the streak is vertical, but look at the Look at the reflex. The reflex is not parallel to it. Okay, so the orientation of reflex here, which is seen in the pupil, is not same. It's not same as that of the streak that we are projecting, right? So what happens because of that orientation problem? There will be a, a certain break in the reflex, and therefore it is called a break. So normally, if it was parallel, you will see the entire reflex like this, and this reflex will be continuous with the uh, streak that we are projecting. However, if the ref reflex is slightly oblique or non-parallel to the projected streak what is happening we are having a break in the reflex so this is what is meant by the break in the reflex and this tells you that there is astigmatism present and there is some uh, different principal axis other than the 90 and 180 degree axis and so how do you know when will the break disappear the break will disappear when you rotate the streak onto the correct axis okay so when you actually rotate the streak onto the exact axis the streak and the reflex will become parallel to each other now coming uh, to here uh, let me explain it to you with a uh, example suppose a patient has a myopic error or maybe a hypermetropic patient so as we all know that in myopia and hypermetropia they are both spherical errors that means whatever problem you have you have it along all the meridians of the eye if the patient is minus two diopters myopic he's minus two diopter myopic along all the meridians of the eye right so if you orient your streak in any direction whether it is 90 180 45 or 135 your reflex will always be parallel to the streak so that is very important and why is it parallel because the power is same right so in a case of spherical error the reflex will always remain aligned in all the meridian however if the person has astigmatism we have different powers along different axes that means we have a flat axis we have a steepest axis and therefore in such cases you will have an off of a kind of a, reflex in the eye and we will have a break in the reflex and that indicates that there is astigmatism 
in this clip you can see that if the person has a spherical error that means all the meridians have the same power and there's essentially no principal meridian okay unlike the astigmatism you can see no matter wherever we put our streak the reflex is always parallel to the direction of the streak now let us take a, a look at this patient here arbitrarily first we will put the streak at 90 degrees however the reflex you can see it's it seemed to be somewhat bended away from the 90 degree streak now let us put it uh, put the streak at 45 degrees you see now that the reflex is perfectly aligned with the 45 degree streak that means that one principal meridian is at 45 now let us put at 180 again it is not aligned and then if you put at 135 again the uh, the streak is aligned properly with the reflex that means the two principal meridians here are one at 45 and one at 135 degrees next coming to the second aspect of the reflex and that is the thickness of the reflex the reflex is usually thinnest when it is aligned to the principal axis now over here i would wa i want you to remember this very clearly that when we are talking about neutralization we have neutralized the axis as well as the power of the eye and therefore at neutralization the reflex is the broadest reflex however when we talk about the astigmatism and finding the principal axis of or the principal meridian of the astigmatic eye what we are talking about here is the thinner reflex right so when the axis is aligned then the reflex will be thinner so that is very important point uh, for you to remember and and do not get confused between this thinnest point of the uh, alignment of the axis with the broader reflex that you see at neutralization so as you can see in the first picture the reflex is not aligned properly to the streak or the or in other word to say the streak is not aligned uh, to the reflex and therefore what you see is here a broader kind of reflex however in the second picture when we align our streak to the reflex that we are getting the the reflex will be much more thinner so a thinner reflex indicates that we are better aligned to the principal axis of the eye Coming to the third uh, property of the reflex when we are dealing with astigmatic eye is the intensity of the reflex. The intensity will be brighter when the streak is on the correct axis. So this is much similar to that of the neutralization. Okay. So as you move away from the correct axis, the streak reflex will become dimmer. So here the reflex is oriented nicely with the streak or the streak is oriented with the reflex and therefore you get a bright reflex. However, here in the first picture, it is not just br broader, but also also it is also less dimmer compared to the second picture because the streak is not aligned properly to the reflex now here another thing is about skew so what is meant by skew the reflex and the intercept intercept is nothing but the streak that we are putting onto the patient's eye that is projected the reflex and the streak do not move in the same direction but they will move in a skewed way or in an oblique way when the streak is off axis right so this also indicates astigmatism so in a normal eye what happens is that if you move your reflex if you move a streak toward this action this side okay vertically the reflex will also move vertically okay either with the motion or against the motion right however if the reflex is not oriented properly or the reflex is not aligned to the streak that means if there is astigmatism present the movement will also be different let's see here you can see that if the here the streak is actually moved horizontally like this but the movement of the reflex that is here is moving in another direction it has no relation to the movement of the streak so such a non-related movement of the reflex and of the streak intercept is what is meant by skew movement and this is also a feature of astigmatism the reflex will follow the direction of the correct meridian rather than following the direction of the streak okay and here we know that the meridian uh, will be totally different and that is the reason why the streak the reflex is not following the movement of our projected streak now have a look at this picture now here we know that again we can see that the intercept and the streak they are the streak and the reflex are not parallel to each other right so they are oriented in a different non-parallel way however as we know that whenever we are having a vertical streak uh, streak we move it horizontally like this however over here just observe the direction of movement of the reflex the reflex is moving obliquely 
against the motion. So this is a kind of skew reflex. Now, after all these steps, when you have actually found out about the axis, okay, you get a basic idea about the axis of this uh, astigmatic eye, about the principal axis. Then what you can do is using your uh, sleeve function on the retinoscope, whether it is Welsh Allen or whether it is Copeland or Heine's uh, retinoscope, what you have to do is you have to make the slit, we have to make the uh, retinoscopic uh, beam that we get the streak make it quite thinner as narrow as possible and this narrowness can be achieved by putting the sleeve totally down in Copeland and totally raised up in Welsh Allen instrument so when you do that you can actually nicely put that streak and put your trial frame or use a protractor for that matter and easily locate the correct axis that you found out so the correct axis or the principal axis uh, can be found out by using this mnemonic that I already told you bits. So B stands for the break. So there will be no break when the reflex is aligned with the uh, streak properly or when the streak is aligned with the uh, reflex. Then the intensity will be the brightest. The thickness will be thinner. Okay, the, the beam will be thinner when it is nicely aligned and S stands for skew. So there will be no skew movement also when you are properly aligned with the um, reflex. The next concept and the last concept for this video is the concept of straddling. Now after you have determined and after you have gotten a idea, a rough estimate about the principal meridia or the principal axis, sometimes there might be some small errors in the determined axis and such errors can be found out using the process which was developed by Copeland and this process is called straddling. So always remember that straddling will be done after you have an idea about the axis. Once you have the idea about the axis put the trial frame on the patient's face and put the correcting cylinder probably a plus cylinder okay and uh, after that you have to start doing a test which is called a straddling test to determine if there's any minor changes in the axis of the cylinder right so before doing that you move closer to the patient till we get movement uh, till we get with movement in both the axis okay so presence of with movement is very important in order to do straddling after that what you have to do is you have to now move your streak in 45 degrees on the either side of the determined axis right so let us see how it is done now suppose the determined axis of the correcting cylinder was somewhere here okay say the determined axis was about 80 degrees now what do you do you orient your uh, streak in two ways number one position will be at either side of the 45 so this side of 45 degrees will be 125 degrees and the other side of the 45 degrees will be 35 degrees now you compare the width of this reflex on both the positions you can see the width is thinner here and the width is more fatter in the second picture that means if you are getting unequal width uh, in two position it basically means that the correcting cylinder axis needs further refinement okay and if you see the width are equal that means your whatever you determine the axis that axis is correct now what if you find unequal widths like shown in this picture that indicates that you need some further refinement but how do you do it you have to move your correcting cylinder in the direction of the narrow reflex so always remember when you're using a plus cylinder for correction the axis can be refined using straddling by moving these uh, the axis of the plus cylinder towards the narrow reflex okay now the question is how much do you turn turn the plus cylinder axis to the thinner reflex by about 10 degrees so do you repeat this test yes you keep on repeating and the end point is till you get equal width of the reflex on both the uh, positions whether it is 45 on this side or 45 on the other side okay so th that's all for today thank you and have a nice day